Okay, so we're finishing up the last little section of um, our last question of 5.2. And so it's asking you to select one of the following conjectures and then write a paragraph convincing someone else that the conjecture is true. We're not going to write the paragraphs right now. We're just going to kind of go through and work to prove that these are congruent. So we started off with A and we said that they are congruent triangles. And the way that we can prove them now, because I don't think you've learned how to prove triangles are congruent yet, <clears throat> that's actually another one of my favorite sections um, to watch you guys learn, is, <clears throat> is if I folded this thing. So can you imagine that I cut out these triangles here like this? I cut out this little um, rhombus shaped thing, and then I folded it down this side and then I fold it again down that side. Do you see how all of them kind of like line up? And so someone said, yeah, they all like reflect each other. Exactly, exactly. So that's that's one way to prove that these triangles are congruent, right? So the next thing, um, someone said, hey, Ms. Johnson, what does bisect mean? So bi means two, sect means sections. So bisect means I'm going to cut something into two sections, but in math, that means that those two sections are congruent. So if this line bisected this line or this segment, then these two segments, AP and PB are congruent. Does that make sense? Yeah. Bisect means congruent. Um, you could also bisect an angle. So let's say that CD bisects this angle ADB. <clears throat> it means that um, this angle here, so ADP, is congruent to PDB. That's what bisect means. Very good. So someone else said, so when you bisect something, you fold it to reflect on each other to become congruent. So they are congruent because you bisected it or it bisected it because those two sections are congruent. So those are like, um, what are they called? Why can't I remember? Those are if and only if statements, meaning it works going both ways. So like, for example, this statement only works one way. If it rains, then Miss Johnson's going to bring her umbrella, right? It doesn't work the other way. If it, if Miss Johnson brought her umbrella, she doesn't control the rain, right? It didn't rain. Does that make sense? So if it rains, then then uh, Miss Johnson is going to bring an umbrella. Okay, it doesn't work the other way. If Miss Johnson brought an umbrella, then it will rain. Doesn't make sense. So these two thoughts. Let me show you. These two thoughts mean similar. Like they actually mean the same thing. So if something bisects, then it means that it created congruent parts right? So if something bisects, then it could create created congruent parts. If you have congruent parts, and there's a couple other stipulations, then then it most likely it was bisected. So you can define each other by each other. Does that make sense? Actually, the definition of bisecting means, in my head, two congruent parts. Okay. So this one says the base angles of the isosceles triangle in the diagram are congruent. All right. There's a lot of words here. Tell me one word that you know, and then we can move on to the other. Does everybody know? Does anybody recognize any number numbers here? Sorry. Any words here? The base angles of the isosceles triangle in the diagram are congruent. Good. Angles. We know what angles are. Very good. Um, so can we say, is it okay if I say angle A? Is it okay to say angle A? So the answer is no. Why not? Because look how many angles are coming out of A. Look how many angles are coming out of A. And some of you are like, two, Miss Johnson? Actually, three. So one of them is the, the one on the bottom. The other one's the one on the top and the other one is the big guy. So three angles are coming out of there. So is it okay for me to say angle A? And the answer is no, because if I say angle A and I mean the one on the top <clears throat> and you hear angle A and you think the one on the bottom, 
do you see how we're going to be confusing each other? Yeah. That's similar to like, if I said, Hey, you guys, if you meet me on the corner of, so here's a street. Okay. Here's a street. And I say, Hey, if you meet me on the corner of, I don't know, main street and first street, um, main street and first street, you're going to at precisely 9 a.m. in the morning, right? On Sunday morning, you are going to get a hundred points of extra credit. You guys are like, what, Ms. Johnson? Really? No, not really. Cause there's no main street and first street that I know of. But anyways, what's the problem with me saying, if you meet me on the corner of first street and main street, first street and main street, right? At precisely 9 a.m., not a second after, not a second before, not a minute after, right? What's the problem with that? Yes, there are four corners. You guys all see that? So let's say that I'm here and I don't know, I have the ability to like disguise myself so you guys don't know, like, because maybe you guys are all like, where is she? I will just run over to the corner that she shows up. I have the ability to disguise myself. Okay. So let's say I'm here, but you're over here. Do you see by the time you come over here, it doesn't work. You guys all see that. So because there's three angles coming out of angle A, we don't say angle A. We can call it angle C, oops, C, A, B, if you're talking about the top one. Notice A has to be in the middle. Do you guys remember this? Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of corners. Good job. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So you recognize angles. What do you, what do you think this word base means? What do you think the word base means in math? Math. What does base mean? Yeah. The bottom ones. Very good. <clears throat> You're thinking of like the base of a triangle are the base of a solid figure. Very good. Of the isosceles triangle. Okay, so isosceles. What does isosceles mean? Do you guys remember? We talked about this yesterday, I think. What does isosceles mean? Yep, two congruent sides. So does everybody see my isosceles? There's a lot of isosceles triangles. Actually, it's your job. How many isosceles triangles do you see <clears throat> in this picture? How many isosceles triangles do you see in this picture? I see four. Yeah, that's right. So here's four. Ready? The top one, CAB. The bottom one, DBA. The one on the left, which is CAD, and then the one on the right, CDB. So I didn't ask you how many triangles there were. There's, um, we're talking about the triangles that have congruent sides. So the base angles of a triangle in the diagram are congruent. So they're asking this. So if you look at that top triangle, um, ABC, they're asking, are these angles congruent? <clears throat> are these angles congruent? This one and this one. So what do you think? Do Are these two angles congruent? What do you guys think? Good. Why? They are congruent. I agree. Um, there's actually a lot of ways that you can prove this, 
but I'm going to go back up here to the triangles being congruent. Do you remember how? Yeah, someone said re reflect. Yeah. So if I take this triangle and I fold it on itself, right? So this angle here is congruent to this angle here. So angle CAB is congruent to CBA because when I fold it, they're the same. Plus, before, because I proved that those triangles are congruent, then those pieces are going to be congruent. Yeah, they do reflect each other. And then same thing goes here. If I was talking about the left triangle and the right triangle, does that make sense? Yeah, very good. Okay. The diagonals of the rhombus bisect each other. So remember, bisect means that it cuts it into congruent parts, okay? So I'll tell you, like, when I am cutting a pan of brownies, right? Pretend this is my pan of brownies. For those of you who bake and stuff, do you know how to cut a pan of brownies? I think this is funny, but I, I you literally try to use math in everything that I think about. Do you guys know how to make this pan of brownies as fair as possible? Meaning the pieces are all the same. Where's your first cut? Do you guys know where your first cut should be? Yes. Very good. In the middle. Okay. So if you ever watch someone cut a pan of brownies, they start over here. And I'm like, you don't know what you're doing. You're just like cutting. You're just going to get like big pieces. Like whenever someone has a, a big old sheet cake, you know, like one of those ones from Costco or something like it's this big. I get why they start over here because they're not going to cut the whole cake, right? Because, you know, you want to leave part of the cake. So usually what I'll do is I'll cut like a block off that I think that everyone's going to be fed with and then cut that as evenly as possible. But anyways, yes. Yeah, so don't cut there. You cut it down the middle, right? As middle as you can, right? As middly as you can, right? And then where do you go? And then what do you do? Yes, you cut it in half again. Now, some of you are like, this way, Miss Johnson? Should I cut? Yes, either way. Just as long as you're cutting things in half. Either way. I actually do either way. Um, actually, I think I when I usually cut, when I make a huge pan of banana, banana bread, I can't even talk, banana bread, um, I usually cut here, and then I 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 cut down the middle. Okay, so then I'm going to cut this in half, and this in half, and this in half, this in half, and this in half, and this in half. Pretty good, right? Like, look how even-ish my sections are. This is, again, not pan of brownies, but it's pretty even, right? And then I probably go down this way, down this way. So this is very different than had I started here, right? Because then you, like, run out of room, and you, then you're cutting, like, this piece into like smallest slivers to make sure there's enough pieces for everybody, right? Okay, so why do I bring this up? When I'm bisecting things, I'm trying to make them as congruent as possible. So I'm trying to make these brownie pieces as congruent as possible. Some of you are like, but Miss Johnson, that one's really big. You're right, because I'm, I'm actually not using a knife. I'm using my pen. <clears throat> so bisects means congruent parts. So they're asking, do the diagonals of the rhombus, this shape here, do the diagonals bisect each other? So meaning this. So does the blue line, this blue line, bisect the green line and vice versa? Oops. And vice versa. So meaning, and I'll write it in here like this, is this piece congruent to this piece? And is this piece congruent to this piece? So remember that when you make these little tick marks, that means that everybody who has three tick marks is congruent to everybody else who has three tick marks. That's why I couldn't use one tick mark because then by putting it here, I'm now saying that this section is the little green section, this guy is congruent to the pink, which it's not, right? And so the answer is yes. Very good. Now tell me why. Tell me why you think that's so. Yes, because they reflect on each other. I could fold them. Perfect. The other way up here. Ms. Johnson, you already said that those triangles are congruent. 
So that meant, would mean that this section is congruent to this because those triangles are congruent. Exactly. There's a lot of reasons that you can go here. Okay. <clears throat> this one's going to be interesting. So the diagonals of the rhombus are perpendicular. Do you guys remember what perpendicular means? So if you look at your screen right now, this guy right here is perpendicular to this guy right here. Perpendicular means that they form a right angle, meaning a 90 degree angle. Does everybody see this little faint line here and this little faint line? That's another 90 degree angle. If you look around your room, you'll see a lot of 90 degree angles, right? Actually, if you look around your world, there's a lot of 90 degree angles. There's a reason why 90 degree angles are used. Some of it has to do with physics and strength and um, other things. Another reason is just because it's aesthetically pleasing, right? Um, but your eyes are so trained on seeing 90 degrees that if I draw one, oh, actually I did. So you guys can all kind of see how I was a little bit off here. It's not exactly 90 degrees because look, if you kind of, if you stare at this one long enough, it's a little bit bigger than 90 degrees, right? So your eyes have been trained since you were way, way little looking for like right angles, right? <clears throat> okay, so can you prove that this is perpendicular to this? That green is perpendicular to blue? That AB is perpendicular to C? D. This one's a little bit different. <clears throat> it kind of has to do with the fact that, do you remember how um, when we folded this over, we said that this angle, C, um, like these two triangles are congruent. This triangle here, the left little guy and the right little guy, they're congruent. Does everybody see that? Well, that means that these angles in here, I'm just going to label it angle, I don't know, angle one and angle two. Does everybody see my angle one right there and angle two? So sometimes we label angles with numbers because it's easier to talk about them. So angle one is congruent to angle two, but at the same time, tell me about angle one and angle two. What do you notice about them together? What do they form? What do they form together? What do they form together? Yeah, they make a line, right? And so do you remember learning, geez, um, maybe in fourth and fifth grade about angles? And when they make a straight line like this, then they add up to 180 degrees. Do you guys remember that? Yeah, so if two angles add up to 180 and they're equal, the only measurement they could be is 90 degrees right? Okay. So I'm going to pause right there. This is a lot. One of the biggest things that you kept saying over and over again was they reflect. They're the same because the triangles were congruent. You guys kept saying that over and over again. You're going to use this observation tool today when we go over our new section. Okay. So thank you.